I'd like to introduce Robert Scott Bell. Before he comes up, I'd like to know, I'll let you know he's got a radio show nationwide every Sunday in the afternoon, 1 to 3 Eastern. You can just go to Robert Scott Bell or Google it. And uh, beginning February 2nd, he's on every day. And he's growing in the world of health. Uh, when I looked for a show that I could sponsor and feel good about, uh, appearing on, his was the only show in this, in this United States that was telling the truth about health. It wasn't selling out the sponsors, and it wasn't censored in any way, shape, or form. And this is what's going on in America and in the world right now. And he's a leader in this field. Um, he, he just, I, I can't even say enough about what he knows and the guests that he has and, uh, and the following that he has. Even though you could say it's under the radar, it's under the radar where you have to look for truth today. So let me introduce Robert Scott Powell. Thank you, Scott Kennedy. Thank you to the 10th Amendment Center and Nullify Now. And really, to, to the credit, we need companies that are doing the right thing, doing well to support this movement. Uh, there are a lot of you, but uh, there are not a lot of companies out there that actually stand up with the courage of Scott Kennedy and Pharmacy. And I also want to say a special thanks to Sovereign Silver for also making this possible for me to be here. Uh, so I'm honored to be here, in fact. My name is Robert Scott Bell. Um, I'm here, I'm alive because of nullification. I'm telling you, nullification is a matter of life and death. You may have never heard the word before unless you did a lot of reading about Thomas Jefferson, and I didn't even realize I was alive because of nullification until I look back at my own history. I was born in the 1960s when the doctors were demigods. Some of you maybe still think they are, probably not in this crowd. They're licensed representatives of the state and Big Pharma who has purchased special privileges, titles of nobility. I mean nobility. No, 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 no. <laughs> That's what a license is. You must ask permission to do that which, well, healing is your birthright. On my radio show, I remind everybody that the power to heal is theirs, it is yours, it is mine. It is not something we need to seek permission to have, to have or to get. We don't need to petition government for it. However, Many of us have been raised at a time where we do feel like we have to ask permission to get well, to heal from diseases. In fact, you know, I have a bottle of silver here. I can spray it anywhere and eradicate any virus on the planet. I don't care what it is. The things that they say you can't do, you can do. But if you were to do that, somebody from the federal government might find you. Despite the fact that they can't find Osama bin Laden. You simply have to cure cancer with no chemotherapy, no radiation, and no surgery, and they will find you. Now, as I said, in the 1960s, uh, the docs told my mom, no breast milk, not good, breast milk, bad. They put me on this can of powder. Now, I look back and I realize I might have been pretty smart as a kid, as an infant even. How did I know that? Well, I projectile vomited that stuff out as fast as she can put it in. <laughs> now, if you've ever read the label, you'd understand. Hey, he was smart. How did he know that? But if that was my only food, which it was at the time, for survival's sake, I could not continue to have that violent reaction. I would perish in infancy. Those of you who know biology, you know about the adaptation syndrome of Hans Selye. And basically, for survival's sake, you are going to now tuck away the bad stuff, put it away, and somehow get whatever nutrients may exist in that powdered milk substitute. It's not optimal health, but if you're going to survive, you're going to have to find a way. And that's what our bodies do. Now, I continued through being raised by modern medicine. My dad was a pharmaceutical rep. His brother was a medical doctor. And so I was raised. I was vaccinated. I had some adverse vaccine reactions. There's a lot of controversy now. You're familiar with the uh, vaccination link to autism? But it, but it could be true because George Stephanopoulos says it, it's not true. Right? Or on the Today Show, Matt Lauer says it's not true. Andrew Wakefield, who I've interviewed a number of times on my radio show, in fact, provided evidence to that which I found later in life, in fact, that the vaccines do cause terrible damage to the intestinal tract, gut damage resulting in all kinds of things, including neurological disorders. Yet I had those vaccines, I had some adverse events, I had skin rashes, I had digestive disorders. All of these things were met by government-sanctioned medicine, approved by the Fear and Death Administration. You've heard of that? The FDA. 
They improved everything I took. Antibiotics. non steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. When I was in elementary school, I had inflamed tendons. Again, that with drugs. Uh, my respiratory system began to be compromised in addition to my digestive system, and I began to be borderline asthma. I had allergies, every allergy known to man. I started the Benadryls, the Dimetaps, whatever they had back then. And then I started over 10 years of allergy injections. Anybody here ever get allergy shots? No, we got a healthy crowd. I was not one of those. I was the canary in the coal mine. 10 years that I should drink water. It was pouring out of my arms with all the holes I had in it. And I was really pleased when I only had to get four a week shots of this, just to tell you how bad it was. Now I continued down this road of modern medicine, raising, again, though it's government sanctioned, it's got to be okay, it's approved by the federal government. Whether it be over-the-counter tons and rollays just to get through the day after every meal as a teenager. Now, of course, they have much worse drugs like Nexium, Pepsid AC, and other things to shut down your digestive system. Led me further and further into illness or deficiency, because now I couldn't absorb anything coming in from the food. But the food I got was from the drive through Anybody else grow up on McDonald's? There was a time when it was a delicacy to go to the fast food. You know, it was like, wow, this is great, we get to go to the, you know, the fast food. Now it becomes a staple almost. And the God's honest truth, if you can go through any of these drive throughs and not at least get some level of diarrhea, there's a problem. You're not well. You're not acting appropriately in, in the presence of toxic food, food with toxins. Did you ever see Super Size Me? The, uh, yeah, it's an interesting movie guy with the 30 days of McDonald's. And he basically had the liver uh, of an alcoholic in 30 days. Yeah, and just reversed it uh, just by returning back to whole foods. But this is the kind of thing I didn't know. And until I was 18, 19 years of age, and I've only touched on, scratched the surface of the many ailments that I had, the doctors threw more drugs at me. There was a time when I just got so sick and tired of being sick and tired when I said point blank to the docs, hey, I'm tired of this. What am I going to do? I'm taking your shots. I even had surgery to open the holes of my nose bigger so I could breathe better. And all that did was it made bigger holes for more mucus to fill. Yeah, it, nothing was corrected, but it was all approved by the government. And so at that point when they admitted to me they didn't even know I was sick, I was thinking, geez, these guys have high degrees which I renamed a dumb degree based on the lack of intelligence that it took. Well, I guess you can memorize things, but you can't think anymore. And they continued down this road to want to poison me further with these synthetic toxic medicaments. And I woke up and said, all right, this is enough, enough, I've had it. And they said, wait, wait, don't go. Don't leave us. <laughs> There's good news for you. Right? I'm 19 years now of life on planet Earth. I'm at a major university, a really good one, and I'm asking you, the docs, will I ever get well? And they say, wait, there's good news for you. There's hope. I said, okay, I've been waiting 19 years. Spit it out! Tell me now. Maybe one day, you'll grow out of it. <laughs> you ever heard that? If I was a woman, they'd have said, just go get pregnant, it'll go away. They do that. They will go away, get pregnant. You couldn't tell me that. And at that point, I realized that the institutions and you know the government, all of these things that I had been raised to believe in that really knew something that I didn't know that was that go-between between me and something more powerful, they really didn't know maybe anything about what was right and true. And it was a major turning point in my life. Now, having been ill at that point, 19 years, all I could do is pray to God, strike me with lightning, whatever you got to do to make me well, I don't care. It didn't happen that way. I met, when I was 24, a homeopathic doctor that came, emigrated to America from Belgium. Wanted to come to the land of opportunity. And I learned about whole foods. I learned about homeopathic medicine. Had anybody ever heard of homeopathic medicine growing up? Anybody here? One person? If, you know, if you go to the, the, the war between the states, you go to the, all the soldiers, the Union soldiers, the Confederate soldiers, they all had homeopathic medical kits on the battlefield. We never learned that. The whole history of America has been rewritten, including its medical history. Why? To keep us, of course, enslaved. Enslaved to government, ultimately. Although some would say enslaved to Big Pharma, which has purchased much of government. Multinational corporations with no allegiance to any nation or state now run our country. 
Of course, that relates as well to the Tenth Amendment because it's much easier to buy one thing than 50 things. It's much easier to buy 50 things than 310 million things. So a centralized bureaucracy is something that is very good for interests that are not of the people. And in my growth and my learning about health and healing, of course, I began to see these other things. And I learned to detoxify my liver. I learned to utilize whole food nutrients like the sea vegetation. That was a big part of my recovery, to clean the liver. And that I, not just the United States, not just Arizona, but I had a constitution. And everyone in this room, you have a constitution as well. And I had ignored it for 24 years because I didn't know I had one, much less that I needed to abide by it. And even in ignorance, I was ill. Now I would say on a federal level, it's more than just ignorance, it's a downright and outright arrogance as well. And we ignore the Constitution at our own peril. My body needs certain things, your body needs certain things. If we don't give it what it needs, there will be a deficiency, much like our nation's constitutional deficiency disease. The Constitution's still there, we're just ignoring it. The Tenth Amendment is here, we're just ignoring it. Not in this room, not the Tenth Amendment Center. And when we talk about nullification, it isn't even that we have to nullify anything. I guess it's just that we have to acknowledge that which is null and void already. And certainly I had to do that in my own life when it came to the end deities, those that were sanctioned by the state and elevated above us that knew something but actually knew nothing about real healing. So I progressed in my learning, undid many of the ailments that I had, and in fact, I was nullifying the federal government right, left, and center because I was doing things with food that were not supposed to be possible. If they are, you are not supposed to say so. Some of the things in sea vegetation include selenium. Selenium can reverse cancer. Yes, it can. It took Jonathan Ebor, a dear friend of mine, a constitutional attorney, he's beat the FDA back seven times. And they still don't want to allow you to know that selenium prevents, treats, reverses, and cures cancer. Or that silver hydrosol in the colloidal silver family can eradicate every viral disease known to man, every bacterial disease, including MRSA, MRSA. Yet if you say that in America and you sell something, and it could be absolutely the truth, then you become public enemy number one, you could be in prison, you could be fined, you could lose your livelihood, your business, and everything that you worked so hard to earn. Does that sound like the American dream? The American ideal? I have many friends from Eastern Europe, and they look at us like we're going nuts. They have already lived under tyranny, under communism, under socialism, and we inch that way every year since I've been alive. And it goes back even further than that. We don't learn history. Do you know that Obama, when he passed Obamacare, he was so thrilled he sent out an email to all of his list, the millions and millions of Americans that love him. He said, we did it. A hundred years in the making, we finally did it. A hundred. He didn't say 110. He didn't say 90. He didn't say 75. A hundred. Why did he say that in 2010? What happened in 1910? Rockefeller and Carnegie Foundation sponsored a preordained report called the Flexner Report. Abraham Flexner went around to medical schools to find out what they were doing with the intent of wiping out all competition to the rise of petrochemical medicines and its monopoly that would establish again a whole new ruling class on planet Earth or strengthen that which existed already. 1910, Flexner Report, 2010, Obamacare, 100 years in the making. If you think this happened just when Obama was elected, You've lost sight of history if you ever had it. Yeah, I was a product of government indoctrination centers, public schools. 